Welcome back to Explanatory Synthesis Essay, writing on the topic of today's globalized world requires more connective highways and railways than national boundaries by Professor Dr. Virendra Pandey, Fulbright PhD from State University of New York for the study and institute for IAS, New Delhi. Today we are going to draft the essay on the topic and here is the first paragraph. As you, as you look at the first paragraph, what you see is that I have uh, either red marked or green marked the entire paragraph and uh, that has been done with a purpose to tell you uh, the elements of the paragraph, which element uh, I have put where. So it gives you an it gives you that idea. So let me read out the paragraph to you. Globalization pervades every element of our daily lives today. By globalization, we mean the movement of people, goods, services, ideas across a widening set of countries. The process of globalization is not confined to multinational corporations and their global sub global supply chains or to banking conglomerates and their international investment portfolios. So you see here, I have uh, the first five lines of the first paragraph, I have red marked. And on the right hand side, you see, I have written number one concept. So basically this part, this initial part of the paragraph gives you a concept of globalization, what globalization is. And what is the definition that I have given of globalization here? The definition that I have given is something like this. Globalization, which means the movement of people, goods, services, and ideas across a vast range of countries pervades every element of our daily lives today, right from low-end to high-end activities. And thereafter, you see, uh, for uh, uh, next four or five lines, I have uh, green marked that uh, by green marking i am giving you the example you see on the right hand side you see example so i am giving an example of the concept of globalization i have taken this example from a bihar village uh, remote bihar village so here it is when a growing child uses china made a smartphone in a remote bihar village chooses to go to malaysia or the gulf to work when grown up and starts his own venture of fish ponds or a poultry farm or improved farming after return, it becomes clear that globalization has a bearing on its choice and activity. So this example is of a Bihar boy growing up in a very remote village and as he is growing up, he is using China made a smartphone. When he uh, grows up, then he chooses to go to Malaysia or Gulf, works there for some years, and then comes back, and when he comes back, he brings back knowledge and expertise to start his own venture of his ponds or poultry farm or taking to improved farming. So, I mean, this uh, from this it becomes clear that globalization has a direct influence on this person's choice and activity. Thereafter, the middle of the paragraph, again I have read marked, and uh, there on the right hand side I have set number three. So from this example, I am generalizing. I have given you the concept, I have given you the example, and then I am generalizing. And what is the generalized idea? It is something like this. There is no doubt that globalization has created on a global scale opportunities that were earlier available only within nations. The falling prices of international air travels and communication goods have turned the whole world into a global village by weakening the notions of national sovereignty and uh, national boundaries. And uh, so here, uh, what is my generalized idea? My, you know, the point of my generalized idea is simply this, that the rise of the phenomena, phenomenon of global village has led to the dilution of the ideas of sovereignty and 
borders. Then again, you see four or five lines. Next four or five lines. Uh, on the right hand side, you see number four CV. I have green marked. CV means here contradictory view. I am giving you a view contradictory to what the uh, what the topic says. And here is this. Things seemed taking an unhindered gallop in this direction until 2016 when borders started reappearing in the European Union and nationalism reasserting itself. When Trump led America suddenly began looking inward and when China's ambition of becoming the global mogul through its worldwide Belt Road initiative surfaced. So this is the contradictory view. And what is the point of this contradictory view? The point of this contradictory view is that there has been a regressive reappearance of a strong notion of nationalism and nation first since 2016. So this is the point I am trying to make here, uh, presenting to you the contradictory view. Thereafter, the very last sentence of the paragraph, which is again red marked, that is TS. TS means thesis statement. That is the thesis statement of this essay. So what is it? It says this essay explains the outlook for what seems to be poised as this new phase of globalization. So the thesis statement of this essay is to explain clearly to the readers prospects of this very new phase of globalization, the phase since 2016. So that outlook, you know, uh, is going to be dramatized through the rest of the essay. Okay. So let's move to now body paragraph number one. That is the second paragraph of the essay. Here it is. Across the contemporary world in this phase of globalization, and you see here, this phase of globalization I have marked uh, because this connects this new paragraph with the previous paragraph. Remember the last sentence of the previous paragraph? In the last sentence of the previous paragraph where the thesis statement was, this, this, this phase of globalization had occurred there. So, you know, by repeating that phrase, what I am doing is I am connecting the previous paragraph to this paragraph for the purpose of a smooth transition. Okay, so let me read it anew. Across the contemporary world in this phase of globalization, the question of connectivity, which has emerged as a very normal necessity, has taken on a positive meaning. And there I have, uh, you know, green marked, and on the right hand side you see, uh, I have written EMI. EMI means main idea. So this this has taken a positive meaning. The question of connectivity which has emerged as a normal necessity has taken on a positive meaning. This is the main idea of this paragraph. Then I am being very rhetorical. Who but perhaps a few customary villagers, traditional monks and modern eccentrics are happy to be relegated to communications backwater. Parochialism, reclusiveness and isolation are nouns that conflict with those desirable places where modernity dominates. In globalizing cities across the world, hyper-connected individuals might complain about the intense demands extracted from them by their numerous information and communication technologies, but none of them want to be disconnected. Today's condition of connectivity has important consequences. For people of current generation, mediated connectivity is basic to their identity, with significant consequences for their patterns of consumption and attachments to new commodities and brands. Being an acolyte of social media like Twitter or Facebook has become a precondition for the construction of such an identity. In Hong Kong, London, New York, and Mumbai, people queue outside Apple stores, willing to wait hours and days for the commercial release of a new version of the iPhone or iPad. Extremely useful for marketing purposes, such as street scenes constitute images of the changing world of connectivity fetishism in the current era of globalization. And again, you see the last two lines I have uh, red marked because here I am restating the main idea uh, in a different language. It's the restatement of the main ideas. 
that has come up at the beginning of the paragraph. Basically, the points I am trying to make through this paragraph, second paragraph or body paragraph number one, is number one, connectivity has become a very normal necessity and an essential qualification for being called a global citizen. And number two, the remaining connected has become so basic to human identity today that connectivity fetishism is no longer a negative phrase. These are the two basic ideas I am making through this paragraph, the first body paragraph or the second paragraph of the essay. Now over to the third paragraph of the essay or the second body paragraph. The enormous possibilities of connectivity like uh, increased trade and investment as well as tourism and people to people contact have prompted governments of South Asia and Southeast Asia to start sub-regional blocks like Babim, Bangladesh, China, India and Myanmar and BIMSTEC, Bay of Bengal Initiative for Multi-Sectoral Technical and Economic Cooperation and it, it, it includes countries like um, Bangladesh, Bhutan, India, Myanmar, Nepal, Sri Lanka, and Thailand, uh, this BIMSTEC. The, the key driving force of these blocks is to push connectivity as a means of strengthening cooperation among us states in the sub-region. Physical connectivity through road, rail, air, and seas is increasingly being driven by four ideas. Economic connectivity, which aims to link production and distribution network, value chains and others, cross-border energy connectivity through power grids and pipelines, digital connectivity by laying cross-border optical fiber, and people-to-people -people connectivity that encourages tourism and exchange of people and ideas. The goal is to ease the restrictions that go with the national borders. What the developments in the two sub-regional blocks involving India suggest is that globalization in India's vicinity is poised to, re to replace a territorialized sub-region by one of networks and flows. The BRI, by, the BRI launched by China in 2014 is thousand times more ambitious. It aims at building what it calls the Silk Route that knows no borders other than those that define the earth as such. So see here, uh, I have marked, either red marked or green marked this paragraph at three places. The very first line of this paragraph, the phrase enormous possibilities of connectivity, I have red marked just to show you how this phrase connects back to the last sentence of the previous paragraph for the purpose of transition. Then, uh, main idea occurs uh, at line number three and continues uh, through line number five. When I'm talking about the sub-regional blocks, uh, Babim and Bimstek, uh, these blocks, sub-regional blocks, are going for connectivity through both rail and road as well as digit, you know, digital, internet kind of thing, digital thing. And connections, such connections are poised to weaken national borders. Uh, then, uh, you know, I have just... Um, elaborated this idea and towards the end of the paragraph I come to the BRI, uh, Belt Road Initiative launched by China just to show that BRI by China is even more ambitious than Babim and Bimstek because Babim and Bimstek are you know regional or sub-regional whereas BRI is global and uh, than those that define the earth as such. Uh, there I have RMI. Uh, that means that I have, I'm restating the main idea, enormous possibilities of connectivity that have occurred in the very first sentence of this paragraph that I am reiterating re re through a different kind of phrasing. So now over to paragraph number three. 
body paragraph number three, that is the fourth paragraph of the essay. Now, here, uh, this paragraph starts with however. So, whatever has been said in the previous paragraph, a contrary view comes here. So, that becomes the transition or that becomes the connecting point. So, let me, let me read out the paragraph to you. However, as explained in the first paragraph, events unfolding since 2016 potentially challenge the thrust of the claim that globalization and state sovereignty do not exist as oppositional copulate. So, this I have green marked, uh, marked with green color because this is the main idea of the sentence. So, in simple English, what is the main idea of the sentence? The main idea of the, sorry, the main idea of the paragraph, what is the main idea of the paragraph? The main idea of the paragraph is that development since 2016 seem to reverse the trend of the march towards globalization. And the rest of the passage simply, you know, explicates that. Most of the changes like various maritime, maritime, territorial disputes involving China and the opposition to pan-regional trade agreements such as the Trans-Pacific Partnership in Europe and the United States are widely seen as signaling a massive swing of a historical pendulum from globalization back to state sovereignty. Let me explain this point because some of you may not be knowing what this TPP is. This TPP is Trans-Pacific Partnership. It is also called the Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement. And this TPP was proposed as a trade agreement between Australia, Brunei, Canada, Chile, Japan, Malaysia, Mexico, New Zealand, Peru, Singapore, and Vietnam. And it was also signed by the United States. But after Donald Trump came to power, he withdrew the U.S. signature from TPP in January 2017. So that, in a way, like, you know, signaled the massive swing of the pendulum from globalization back to the notions of sovereignty and national borders, nations first. Then another example I am giving here is uh, which has given setback to globalization is that of the IS. So the Islamic State groups terrorist activities and propaganda that mock modernity with its dynamic social media melded to warped medieval morality and the outbreak of the 2020 coronavirus pandemic that has led to the lockdown of economies and the suspension of free mobility regulations seem to have a serious setback to globalization on the one hand and conversely an impetus to inward look on the other hand. But enlightened leaders recognize that the only real solution to problems like pandemics and climate change and cyber war is to look outward, outward more and better cooperation. The solution to a badly funded weak World Health Organization is not to withdraw from it in the hope that it withers away, but rather to fund it better and give it more autonomy so that it could stand up to China or the United States if a health emergency required it. Today, no single country can organize the entire world anymore. So the days of unilateralism is over. Uh, today's world is you know, multilateral in nature. That's the point, mm, you know, I am trying to make. So now over to body paragraph number four, that is the fifth paragraph of the essay. Now, uh, the fifth, like the rest of the essay, what you see here is that, again here, I have green marked, red marked at some places, uh, the first sentence that you see, I have a green marked word appended because it. Uh, some of you may not be knowing the meaning of this word. Appended simply means turned upside down. And uh, also 
uh, there on the right hand hand side in the you know i have with the red color written transition uh, so let let's see there is no doubt that the novel corona virus has up ended society and people are disoriented but the way nations and people are coping coping with a pandemic pandemic by bringing in the changes they have accepted in their own lives so here uh, you know transition here flows at the level of idea transition is here not at the level of diction i was talking about the corona virus thing towards the end of the previous paragraph and this paragraph begins with again corona virus so it is a level of idea that the connection is there and therefore the connection is very smooth so let me uh, let me read it again there is no doubt that the novel corona virus has upended society upended means turned upside down people are disoriented but the way nations and people are coping with the pandemic by bringing in the changes they have accepted in their lives uh they have taken online courses and seen doctors and therapists using telemedicine and governments have opened up their coffers in ways that were once unimaginable and could lead to greater willingness to invest in the future since march to 2020 if india on the one hand has gone for a for atmanirbhar bharat and banned investments and many imports from china in response to the pandemic and the incursion in ladakh it has generously contributed distributed corona virus managing medicines to numerous countries in a spirit of responsibility to the other and has been able to attract investments from elsewhere on the other hand india is poised to be a global guru through the increasing global popularity of indian practices of namaste and yoga its campaign for one sun one world as a repost to the rapacious chinese obor has enhanced the image of a country that really values hospitality and cosmopolitanism self aggrandizing self aggrandizing means you know self enlarging globalization of the chinese through the bri investments and the indian way of countering it have started to make the west see the blindest part of its own globalizing efforts since uh, 1820 the lesson taught by the global response to the pandemic is crystal clear globalization must hail vasudhav kutumbakam a pandemic that initially drove countries apart can prove to be the catalyst for a long shot closer family based on the principle of hospitality to each other so this paragraph you see here this through this paragraph even as i am uh, making clear to you uh, the prospects of the new phase uh, this paragraph counters the contradictory view and here i have basically the example from india i mean india is not the only country but you know many the way countries uh, around the globe opened their coffers uh to cope up with the corona virus pandemic and the way people adjusted uh to a new lifestyle these are very encouraging signs these are very encouraging signs uh and um, these signs if you take india in uh, you know in mind uh india's response to both corona virus as well as the incursion in ladakh the chinese incursion in ladakh on the one hand it uh, see how india responded india has responded with the slogan of atmanirbhar bharat and india reached out to the rest of the world uh with the help of necessary uh, medicines needed to manage this pandemic and currently india as you see uh, is in the forefront of giving vaccines to the rest of the world 
and uh, so india is being very hospitable because of this crisis indian values have got international attention caught international attention namaste yoga and modi's campaign uh, you know global campaign for one sun one world which he uh, brought as a reply to chinese uh, belt road initiative which many people have criticized as uh, chinese rapacity chinese greed to colonize or you know to neo colonize the world so what india has done is that india has pushed its values of traditional values of hospitality and cosmopolitanism in the forefront as a result of which the self aggrandizing policy of the chinese tendencies of the chinese uh have become even more palpable uh leading to a tarnishing of the chinese image on the one hand uh, and the shall uh, and and the and the bright image of india on the other hand and this uh, indian way of hospitality or cosmopolitanism which we call vasudhaiv kutumbakam uh, it has also it is also making the west because you see uh, this uh, globalization which was pushed by the west like the chinese over was uh, more or less uh, you know self enlarging it was to cater to the interest of the west and globalization uh, which has started long back uh, had many blind spots and the west is now coming to see that blind spot if you want to uh, get better idea about it uh, please read uh, jacks derrida's book on cosmopolitanism and uh, hospitality where uh, the basic point he is trying to make is that the west prints on being uh, cosmopolitan and global but actually cosmo both cosmopolitanism and uh, hospitality are yet to come to the west so this is how he deconstructs there and it's so uh, you know persuasive it's so convincing i have taken the idea from there not quite borrowed it but you know using idea from there and uh actually endorsing india's drive uh for a better kind of globalization and look at the last sentence you see what it says a pandemic that initially drove countries apart can prove to be the catalyst for a long sought closer family based on the principle of hospitality to each other the way india is reaching out to the rest of the world with uh, medicine and vaccines uh you know it's it's very it it contains very encouraging shine that Mm. because it has become a catalyst for a long desired closer family based on the principle of vasudhaiv kutumbakam then i come to the concluding paragraph of the essay uh here it is to conclude despite the covid 19 blow globalization is not a dead hit the world has become a living organism with the physical connections equivalent to blood pumping through veins and the virtual connections comparable to our nervous system understanding the system dynamics and interdependencies has become vital to sustainable global growth and development the current chapter of pandemic is adding a new dimension to the budding fourth phase of globalization that is a greater inclusiveness that is a prerequisite for a well meaning global integration and roughly the essay is of 1200 words so basically you see what i have done in the conclusion is i have uh pounced on the implications of the body paragraphs and uh, i have combined them 
into one powerful sentence. Uh, second, the second sentence, the world has become like a living organism with the physical connections equivalent to blood pumping. Physical means that, you know, basically roll rate. And the virtual connections means this uh, digital connections comparable to our nervous system. And uh, then, you know, uh, in a way like I am reiterating uh, my thesis statement. The thesis statement was this uh, about the outlook of the new phase. New phase is the fourth phase. And I am restating that thesis statement in a way that it not only restates the thesis, but it also makes clear to you the emerging direction uh, that globalization is poised to take. So that's all. Through these two lectures, I taught you, through the previous lecture, I taught you how to approach explanatory synthesis essay. For, for example, I have taken this topic about globalization. The, in the, in the, through the same first lecture, I, I showed you the writing process. And today, through the second lecture, I uh, demonstrated to you the draft of the entire essay. And uh, that's that's for the for today. But in the next lecture, I will be discussing to you the 2020. I have written there 2021 because the exam is was of 2020, but exam took place in January 2021. So recently there has been this UPSC um, examination, and I will be analyzing. I will be analyzing the question to give you an analytical understanding of the GS essay paper questions. So the whole lecture will be on the analytical understanding of the question paper. Thank you.